But just getting back to the voice, which is the issue at hand now, as you alluded to earlier, Gary, there are a lot of Indigenous people, especially women and children in outback communities, who desperately need our help. Now, the voice will add nothing to our ability to help them. But apart from those desperate people, is there any reason to treat Indigenous citizens as different from the rest of us? There isn't, except in one respect. Now, or a couple of respects. Uh, recognise a better way has, has, has the three-point plan, classically, you know. But the first one is to say, OK, there is a conversation about recognising a pre-existing people. I think you can put that, arguably, put that in a, a preamble of the Constitution, but it's an historic recognition, not a recognition of a present people. The second one's really important. There is, by law, Commonwealth law, a thing called native title. Native title holders have a special relationship with the Commonwealth under law. They're often the people most in trouble, OK? So a parliamentary committee can manage that discussion between all Australians, the parliament, and native title holders. That's the one we want to open up on. That's the real deal. And then thirdly, just work with existing Aboriginal organisations. You know, uh, Aboriginal people are the most organised group in the country, politically. They are very astute. They've all got their political relations uh, they're knocking on the doors of state polys, federal polys all the time. They know heads of departments. They've got lots of contracts. Why the hell would you put another lot on top? And I tell you where we're getting much support from native title holders who are saying, whoa, hang on, we, we know our politics. We've done our deals. We've got our relationship. Who is this new mob? They're going to come in over the top of us and knock us down a peg. You see what I mean? Yeah, and maybe. Yeah. And maybe upset all of our political relations. So it native sounds, title holders... It sounds like a high-level like, version of humbugging to me, mate. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Is the tide turning on The Voice, you reckon? Is the, 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 the momentum for no starting to uh, gather pace? Look, yes, but let's not overstate it. What, what's happening is that most Australians don't know much about this at all. So they say to the pollster, are you in favour of the voice? Uh, and they hear motherhood, motherhood, yes. OK, that's at about 55 60%. If, if that's the starting point, then the yes case is in big trouble. Because by the time we be begin to explain what the voice means, i.e. that it's just politics, and that close behind it comes a treaty, and then behind that becomes this beast called truth-telling, which will just be one side of the story, then I think once people get the idea that if you vote for the voice, then you get voice, treaty and truth, and together it's, it's a big... Then I think the whole thing will collapse pretty quickly, uh, and I'd actually like to see an extraordinary rebuff during the referendum, like a really low vote, so that we can start a whole new conversation with the Aboriginal leadership to say, all right now, girls and boys, how about we get down and solve the problems of the last 20% and not keep talking about you, you East Coast well-off leaders. Well said, well said. And just seeing it from Prime Minister Anthony Albanese's perspective, if it does fall over, and dramatically as you hope it will, what effect will that have on his leadership? I think uh, his, his leftist mates, remember, he's just, he's just an inner city lefty, uh, will be very angry with him, but they'll blame the Liberals. They'll, they'll blame, you know, Peter Dutton, blah, 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 blah. Yes, of course. Uh, what will determine Albanese's long-term future, though, is how that government manages the wider issues, i.e. energy prices, inflation, superannuation, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it'll lock uh, some chips off him. Uh, but then we'll see what he's like as an actual prime minister and not just a, an inner city muck around who goes out and, you know, does all the dancing and the street walking and all that sort of stuff. 